Hey, better sax players. Like just about everything else, the world of saxophones has its share of myths, legends, and widely held yet false beliefs. In today's video, I'm gonna try and clear some of these up, at least some of the ones concerning instruments and gear. As you watch this, if you agree or disagree with anything I'm saying, let me know in the comments section below. Myth. Some saxophone brands are better suited to jazz or classical or some other style. I'd say that at least 90% of the saxophone sound comes from the player playing it, physically and technically. It is heavily influenced by their personal sound concept, what they're hearing in their head, and then it's further colored and shaped by the mouthpiece and reed setup they're using at the time. The instrument itself just tells the sound what pitch to come out as. Now, different instruments will further color that sound slightly, but who's to say what shade of that color is better suited to jazz or classical or, or any other style of music? If your instrument allows you to create the music you hear in your head the way you want it, then it's well suited to that purpose. It doesn't matter what brand name is on it. Myth. You need a vintage instrument to get a vintage sound and a modern instrument to get a modern sound. Once again, the sound comes from the player. The saxophone is just a tool. You are the instrument. You are the one that sounds good or bad or vintage or modern. Myth. You need a fancy ligature to sound good. False. A ligature's job is to hold the reed securely on the mouthpiece and let it vibrate freely. It should be relatively easy to adjust as well. Most cheap and basic ligatures will do all of these things no problem. Ligatures have very little, if any, influence over your sound and aren't worth agonizing over. Get yourself a ligature that fits your mouthpiece and then go practice. Myth. Chinese-made saxophones are all garbage. There was a time not all that long ago when instruments imported from China were generally terrible. They had a weird sound, the intonation was off, the metal alloy that they used was of very poor quality, so the solderings didn't hold and, and things fell off of them. The corks and felts would fall off. You couldn't keep the instruments in adjustment. They were pretty lousy. This is no longer the case. These days, the manufacturing of saxophones in China is taken pretty seriously and the quality is getting better and better. Don't write off all recently made Chinese saxophones based on their former reputation. Now, whether or not the Chinese government is using these instruments to listen to our saxophone playing, that's another question. Myth. You need to buy the same brand saxophone as your teacher. There may be a lot of very good reasons to buy the same brand saxophone that your teacher has. However, your teacher is not the same person as you are. And what is the best instrument for your teacher is not necessarily the best one for you. I don't think this gets done so much anymore in the saxophone world, but insisting that your students buy the same brand saxophone that you've got is not cool. Let people make up their own minds about what instrument to buy. Myth. You need an expensive mouthpiece to sound good. Not true. You need to listen to great saxophone players every day. You need to practice your saxophone every day. And then you need to find a way to connect what you hear with what you play throughout this process. That's the only way I know of to get a beautiful saxophone sound. The mouthpiece is once again just a tool. A really good one may help make the process a little easier, but there are many inexpensive mouthpieces out there that will get you where you want to go. Myth. As you advance as a saxophone player, you need to play on harder and harder reeds. When we first start playing the saxophone, we start on quite soft reeds because there's less resistance, it's easier to get a sound, and we still haven't developed the muscles in our embouchure. As we develop the strength in our embouchure, 
we increase the strength of our reeds. So it's natural to get the idea that as you get better, your reeds should get harder and harder. The legendary saxophone player Michael Brecker once told me that he used very soft reeds because of some physical issues he was dealing with. On the other hand, I know some great players who buy the hardest reeds they can find and then clip them to make them even more resistant before they're comfortable. For most of us, somewhere in the middle is the best place to be. But if soft reeds worked for Michael Brecker, he may have been onto something. Myth. My saxophone is the reason I'm playing out of tune. Every saxophone ever made has tuning inconsistencies. Some saxophones are more inconsistent than others and will be therefore more difficult to play. But ultimately, it's the player who plays in tune, not the saxophone. We all have to learn to listen and match our pitch to the ensemble we're playing with or to the other notes in context if we're playing unaccompanied. The instrument alone cannot do this work for you. Myth. The lacquer has a significant impact on the sound of my saxophone. The paint on your saxophone doesn't affect the sound in any real measurable way. As you can see from my tenor sax here that has never been lacquered to begin with, brass instruments get pretty funky looking if they don't have some sort of protection. Lacquer is a purely aesthetic consideration. Myth. I should get my saxophone overhauled or repadded every five years or so. While there are many factors involved in this particular myth, the only reasons why all of your pads would need to be replaced in that short a period of time are, one, they were poor quality to begin with, two, they were not installed properly originally, and three, you didn't swab out your horn after every playing session and remove the excess moisture from the pads. Properly installed quality pads can last for decades if your mechanisms are in good working order and you take good care of your instrument. A proper saxophone overhaul, the type that lasts for decades along with regular maintenance, should be pretty expensive. It takes a long time to do and the materials aren't cheap. Beware of low cost and fast saxophone overhauls. There you have it. Remember to comment below and share your thoughts on these myths and any others I may not have covered. I hope this video has been informative for you. If it has, go ahead and click the thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, get yourself subscribed to the channel for weekly videos like this one. Also be sure to follow Better Sax on Instagram and Facebook where I post bonus content daily. Thank you for watching and see you again soon in another Better Sax video.